Hi, thank you. If we could get back to our seat, that would be great. Thank you. Right, we're going to the next section of our program this morning. We've got some beautiful people over here who wants to come and share their testimonies with us. I will call on Richard to come and lead us. Shall we give them a hand of applause as Richard comes forward to introduce them? Thank you. So this is such an exciting morning where we get to experience and we get to hear stories of how Jesus has transformed people's lives. Now this is, this is what it's all about, you know, um, when you see people totally transformed, you know, through the power of Jesus Christ. And, and it's just so amazing that um, I've got to spend some time with, with some of the um, people getting baptized and hear some of their stories. And so I know, you know, that you'll be really blessed. And I just want to honor Ivan, you know, when he come up, I really felt that that was a God moment, you, you know, when he come up and he just shared his heart. And, and I think you all, you know, agreed that that was such a powerful moment. So, um, and Ivan will be coming up and sharing with the rest of them because there's more in his, in his testimony that's really powerful. So um, at this moment in time, I would like to invite everyone who's been baptized today to come up to the front, please. Father God, I just thank you and I honour every single person standing here, Lord God. And, and we just pray, Lord God, Lord God, any nerves, any anxiety that's in any of them, Lord God, that you would just take that away right now, Lord God. And I just pray that as they speak, it will be your words that will flow out of them. And they will just, um, it's not about what this is, as long as it's from the heart, Lord God. So I just pray, Lord Jesus, that, um, that you just be with them um, right now in Jesus' name. Just before the guys give their testimony, can we just take a minute and can I ask you all just to pray for them right now? Because obviously the enemy doesn't want them to give their testimony. He doesn't want them to be baptised. So just pray for them that God will be with them, that God will reassure them, and that God will take them through this. Right, this is my friend Craig. be able to tell he's a little bit nervous because he's scared stiff of you lot and I don't blame him. Now Craig, Craig, before we go any further, what's the word, the two words that taught you to tell Carmel? Yes dear. <laughs> yes, dear. That's the answer to everything. Right. So Carmel and Craig, can you just tell us a little bit, what you used to be like before you knew Jesus? A little rascal I think, for a night, a little bit, um, I got um, I was alright until four years ago I got involved in drugs and then basically lost everything. So I did literally need to do something. I did, yeah, I was at a rock bottom, got kicked out of the family home and then uh, I had nothing. So what happened that made you want to find Jesus? How did Jesus come and find you? Well he came into my life just after the new year. We lost my dad due to cancer and um, yeah he's helped me and come out a lot, you know. Because we were there, what problem again, you know. So it's, he's coming to my life at a good point, and he's helped us a lot. And he's guiding us into this new life, away from the old life where there's all drugs and you no know, okay. okay, so um, that's a little bit about your hand of change. Want to tell us a little bit more how God's helped you to change and what's happened with your life? Yeah, he's um, got his, uh, me and Carmel set a date, we're getting married on. Uh, <laughs> feel welcome since the first Sunday we've come here, so thank you. Final question, I've been warned about this one. Why do you want to be baptised? Why? 
because um, the old me needs to be laid to rest so I can resurrect the new me. Well, I had it all prepared yesterday, but now it's just, it's gone. So, in 2015, I had a little boy, we went for a routine scan, um, and she asked me, was he moving, and I said no. And the next thing we knew, he had to be born. He stopped growing at 24 weeks. It was only one pound, five pounds, not even a bag of sugar. So they asked me, should I give birth to him or have the injection to see why he stopped growing, that he could be a stillborn. So they put this in a room and then they brought this needle in to do it and I said, no, get him out. So he came out, um, he, he was really poorly. We got told he wouldn't survive. Um, so at that time, I didn't get to see him until six hours after, but everyone else did. So at that time, I prayed to God. I asked him to help me because I didn't want to lose my little boy. And um, we just kept praying. We went to the church, didn't we? We went to the chapel. We asked the priest to come and bless Brooklyn. Um, and then he kept getting all these problems. Like it just kept getting worse every day. So we were praying, and then in the end, God answered us, and he survived. He, he, he was um, and then he still has he still had a few problems, but he's okay now. So then I didn't really pray again. I thought God's answered me. I don't I don't need to pray. So then we, we had another little girl and we were told she was going to be Down syndrome, she was going to be deaf, she, she, she was going to be everything. We got told to abort her at 34 weeks. At 34 weeks and two days, you know, 34 weeks and four days she was born. Absolutely perfect, nothing wrong with her. <laughs> Just imagine if I were listening to that hospital, that, that's wrong. So by then I prayed to God again for that and he delivered. And then after that, I got postnatal depression. I had to get sectioned. I went to drugs to take over. Um, then I stopped drugs all by myself because um, I was really bad addicted. But I stopped it all by myself, no help whatsoever. And I pulled myself through for my family because my kids needed me. They had no one else. No family member will look after them because my family say they are just they're too naughty or they're just too hard to look after. They don't understand. They, they are hyper, but they don't understand them. Yeah, just a bit. So, um, yeah, and then Harlow was born um, in New Year's Eve. She was born Harlow. Um, she was the biggest we had, six pound. Um, and then after Christmas, after it all, I was having a nap one day. I think Carla was only about five weeks old. I was having a nap because I was extremely tired. And then my friend texted me and she was like, do you want to come to church? This, they're doing this, um, this curry night. So straight away I said, yeah. I didn't even ask Craig. So I went downstairs and I was like, yeah, Craig, we're going out. We're going to church. Um, so then I went to this curry night, I didn't even like curry, <laughs> um, and I met Chloe and Steve, Stephen, um, but Richard was giving his testimony, and then Stephen was, and then everything Stephen said, it related to me, like I was sitting there like crying, and Chloe's saying, she hasn't got the cold, and I'm like... <laughs> And she was like, come on, go and pray. So they took me and they prayed for me. And that's when I gave my life to Jesus at the mission weekend. And I just, I just thank them to, do you know what? If it wasn't for them to, I probably wouldn't. It was their inspiration, their words. So I really want to thank you. And I want to thank everyone here for being part of our lives. Because our own family, 
are not part of our lives. I'm glad I did get upset earlier because I've seen people have their families with them and we didn't have anyone. But so we for all of you, so we are so so thankful that you and God is he's just he's just amazing. He's let me and Craig get married. Well, we're going to be married on the 18th, but we're having it here on the 21st as a blessing. So you're all welcome. Everyone is. But you'll be here anyway. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all. That's the answer. So, Carmen, why do you want to be baptised? Because I need to. I just need to give myself solely to God. I need to, I need to go the right path. I need to be straight and I need to do it. I would like to introduce my friend Steve. <laughs> Me and Steve have been on a journey together and, um, and we've just so it's just amazing, you know, to see how he's grown, you know, in, in the Lord over the last few years. And, um, and he's going to tell a bit about his story. Thanks, Rich. Um, I've been told this one, I was okay, then I wasn't, and then I definitely was. So I grew up surrounded by brothers and sisters. Mum and dad were Christians, although I wasn't sure what that meant really. As kids were encouraged to go to church, around about the age of eight or nine, I went to church with my dad. It could be a bit scary at times, but it was okay. Went for a while, but then started to get friends and hang out with them instead of weekends. Um, started going to life group with my dad around the age of 13. And again, stayed a while, but kind of preferred to hang out with my mates. Um, at 17, I met a girl. We fell in love, we done life together, we moved a couple of times, and we were happy. I was okay. My girlfriend wanted to quit a job as a graphic designer and pursue a career as a fitness instructor. I wanted to quit my job for something a bit less physical, as it was causing me a lot of pain in my back. But I wanted to make her happy, I wanted to make it work, so I agreed to stay on my current job. Over a two year period, the world just came crashing down really. Um, during that time, my back was in agony. I was on plenty of painkillers and still really struggling. Uh, I had to put both our little dogs down. Thanks, brother. Um, Dad was diagnosed with dementia. <laughs> I fell into a Pretty bad depressed state. Anger took over. Uh, the missus spent more and more time out of the house teaching on weekends and evenings. She wasn't there when I needed her. I turned into a bit of a monster, to be honest. Furious at the world and furious at my girlfriend for not being able to make things better. I said some pretty evil things, hurtful things. Yeah, I'll just go to work, you chill out. Don't worry about me. And why don't you quit that stupid hobby? Get a real job. Can't you see the pain I'm in? I got more resentful and bitter towards her and finally she couldn't take any more. And she said, it's over. For the first time in 25 years, I, I was listening to her. <laughs> I begged her to stay. Eventually she did give me a chance to sort myself out. Thankful to her, I changed everything. I vacuumed, washed up, cleaned the house. You know, you're hearing this right. <laughs> Done the shopping, cooked the meals every evening. After about a month, she sat me down and she said, all of this is really lovely. You are a better person now than when we first met. This made me smile, we were gonna be okay. And then she said, better don't love you anymore. I've gotta go. So, I wasn't okay. <laughs> I was pretty devastated. I couldn't sleep. I just drifted in and out. Left the hallway light on every night, hoping she walked back through the door. 
when I tried to sleep, I had to have the radio on all night to drown out the voices in my head. I was crying. I paced the streets for hours on end, trying to wear myself out enough to sleep. All the while thinking, who could I call? Who could I call? Who's going to be about this time of the night? It was December when we parted, and I struggled on day after day. Week after week, trying to function at work, pay the bills, just trying to, trying to live. One Sunday morning in April, I was pacing the living room carpet with tears rolling down my face. Weak from lack of food and shaking, I slowly fell down to my knees in the corner of the room. I was beside myself, crying non-stop. I was failing, spiraling further and further into despair. Thoughts are now entering my mind I've never had before. Things I'd never think of, but there they were. Lots of pills seemed like a really good way to end this torment. Then again, I've got some lovely kitchen knives. They don't get much use now as I've got no one to cook for. I was too weak to stand. Being held down, I was so weak. I couldn't get to the kitchen. <laughs> this only frustrated more and more and I, I started shouting out. This is not fair. Why me? Why is this happening? God, why am I hurting? <laughs> Why am I hurting so much? It all went quiet for a moment and all I could see was the house phone. It was the only thing within reach. I picked it up. I called my sister. I said to her, are you going to church today? She said, no, we're going on a bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, of course, you wanted to go. I said, yeah, I kind of really need to. So she took me to church. We entered this little church, and I cried from the minute I sat down to the moment I left. I wasn't upset. I was crying tears of joy. I had no idea why, but I knew I needed more of that. A few weeks later, on the 17th of May, 2015, my sister brought me to Hope Church in Corby, where I experienced the same, same overwhelming joy and uncontrollable feeling of love. I didn't know it then, but that was the Holy Spirit moving in me. When I was too weak and I felt held down, I now know that was God holding me down. And I no longer feel condemned, guilty. Because I know Jesus has forgiven me. Right, the battle I went through was not because of something I had in my life, but because of something I hadn't got in my life. I hadn't got God. I do now, and my life is totally different. <laughs> now, now that God's in my life, uh, I do want Him now, and I never want Him to leave me. I pray that this story encourages you to seek God, whatever you're going through. I'm definitely okay now. Amen. Excuse me. Um, I did give my testimony um, in 
on New Year's Eve when Adam um, moved to a new church. So I know that some people have heard my story before, um, but I was asked if I would give it again today. Um, and it has added to since I last gave my, my testimony. So um, a year ago in March, I wasn't in a very good place. Um, in I, I'd just come out of a, a not very good, quite toxic relationship um, and was always trying to fill this um, this gap, this space that just man after man would not fill. Um, and I sat at my mum's kitchen table one day and cried and cried and cried and cried. Um, and my mum accepted God into her life a couple of years ago um, and the change in her was just it was just beautiful and I knew that I wanted I needed some of that I needed something to fill this gap that I was trying to fill with relationships um, so I came to I came to, I went to to another church for a little while which didn't quite suit me and mum said there's a there's a happy church <laughs> um, so she came to Hope with me for the first few weeks and the fir my first day in Hope I gave my life to God because it, it, is, it is a family, it's not, it's something that I didn't have before um, and she, she gave me a little red booklet called The God Shaped Hole um, and it was absolutely, it was filled with that um, and then earlier this year, so I, I came to church and kept coming to church and I loved it, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved being here, but it was only this year that I really, really felt God. Um, I had a dream earlier this year, and Emma knows, I got straight on the phone to Emma and Lynn and told them about my, my dream, um, that God, that my brother had asked me to sit at a lake with him, and this was the most beautiful lake that you'd ever seen in your life. And I kept saying to him, just, just hold on, I just need to put the washing out, and I need to do the shopping, and I need to do this, I need to do that. And a storm came, and for me, that was God telling me, you, you, you're just filling this life still, Chloe, with the wrong things. You really are. You need to fill it with the right things and the right type of people. Um, and I, yeah, I got straight up and phoned Lynn and Emma and told them about my dream, and, and Lynn said, that's God, that is God talking to you, and I'd never heard God before. Um, not not like that. And since then, I've had a few dreams where I've woke up and got on the phone to Lynn and, and told them, told her about um, what I'd thought um, and what I'd dreamt um, and the, the, the peace, you know, since bringing God into your life, the peace and the things that he changes in me, which I didn't expect him to change, but he has changed because I no longer, this, this probably sounds silly to everybody, but I've been single since October and for me that is, that is just amazing because I'm, I'm always... <laughs> trying to feel like that. Um, as much as I would still love a husband, I'm quite happy with, with God in my life at this moment in time. <laughs> so that's my story. Thank you. taken many twists and turns through the course of time but for myself and my wife Kerry watching our firstborn child Graham's life being taken away by the demon drink was devastating for all his friends and family Graham and I started worshipping at Hope Church last year where we were given a heartfelt welcome being guided under the fellowship of Damien with steadfast prayers of Dave, Paul, Frank, Colin, Wills and Richard. I am truly thankful for sharing your Christian values with, with me and Graham, helping us on the path of, of righteousness. Although I may have been cynical of God at certain junctures in my life, I believe now I am redeemed. Turning to him to be washed of my misdeeds and cleansed from my sin while acknowledging my faults are ever before me. I am relishing continuing my Christian path with God, making changes whenever I fall. The word testimony means witness. <coughs> and wow, have I witnessed some miraculous changes, even supernatural events in such a short time have been 
confirming my belief that miracles do happen. Coming to God is like shaking yourself down, awakening, <coughs> resetting your life in order to start afresh and be renewed by the majesty of the Holy Lord. Only He and He alone can release us from the chains of mortality, raising us out of the shame and misery. Let me now be immersed in the magnificence of God's holy waters as a sign of devotion to His divine authority. By the grace of God, allow me to live in His sacred fellowship forevermore. To you I call, O Lord, my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me, for if you remain silent, I shall be like those who have gone down the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call for you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Sharing my testimony with all of you and Graham's friends and committing myself to the holy baptism is truly a humbling experience. Thank you. I'd like to introduce my very close friend, Ryan, who's going to share some of his story with us. Hi, everyone. Hi. I've had a nightmare of a week. Uh, apparently the devil ups his game uh, to the back. Well, he has. And he's used a lot of people. He's used my weaknesses to bring me to my knees. And I, I, I've, I've slipped up. Even this week I've slipped up. But um, I just make sure I keep coming back. Yeah. Exactly. So um, it all started. From, from young, I always had this anger inside of me from, from, mum, yeah, from, uh, from, oh, I can't even talk, man, uh, yeah, so, from my mum and dad's relationship, I uh, always had this anger in me, and then, that, as I got older, it just fueled and fueled and fueled, and then I was always trying to find trying to find that missing thing in my life. So I turned to drugs, I started taking steroids, and try, just try, the whole time I was just trying to find God, and I wasn't even realizing that, that I was trying to find God. And um, so yeah, I ran out of words to say. <laughs> um, yeah, my mind just went blank. <laughs> so, um. Do you want to tell us about how you felt when the first time, you know, you, you came into, into church? Or how, you know, we sort of started with us, really? Yeah, 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 so. yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, I used to work with Richard about three, four years ago. And uh, everyone in work used to be like, oh, he's a Bible basher, he's this, he's that. But that used to, that used to really make me angry, even though I didn't believe, or, you know what I mean? But I used to always, like, oh, Richard, oh, what's this? Like, do you know what I mean? I used to always ask him questions. So it was always there. And um, so, yeah, I'll keep running out of Oh, yeah, and then I come here. <laughs> then I come here for the first time. Normally it was after a bad weekend. I'd be up in the corner, I'm sure you've heard that testimony. I'm up in the corner crying my eyes out. And I told you about the time when uh, I was in the prison cell and I ran out of press ups. You all know about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so say it. All right, so. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got arrested uh, in London, didn't I, Mum? Yeah. Uh, no one knew where I was for three days. I was in hospital and uh, eventually they took me back into custody. And uh, I was doing loads of press-ups, and I'm like, oh, I'm bored, pacing up and down the cell. I thought, you know what, I'm going to pray. So I prayed, God, do something. So I, as, I've, as I've been released, I've walked out, so I've walked out, and I've looked up at the sky, and there's a cloud, like, in the shape of a cross. And I was like, and then this just feeling of, oh, what, just come over me, you know? So, like, I'm walking, I'm walking down.
Um, London, no one knows where I am. I don't have a phone, I have five pounds of my name. I'm in the middle of London. So all the cigarettes I had, I was, I was giving them out to the poor, thinking that, oh yeah, I'm a good man, giving my cigarettes out, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so, and then I come back to church, but unfortunately, uh, the devil, the devil stepped in because uh, I thought Dynetics, what is it, Damien? What is it? Dynetics, the, Tom Cruise. What? Yeah, Scientology. So as I was walking down the street, this Scientology guy brought me in and uh, started t telling me, I said, do you believe them? So I thought that was God's, yeah. So I read the whole book about that, which I'm raging about. But yeah, <laughs> instead of the Bible, you know, I read that whole book, but yeah. And uh, I, was always, I was always one foot in, one foot out. And then eventually it got hold of me. So six months ago, yeah. Six months ago, so now my foot's in the door. I've had a few slip-ups, I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah, but Jesus loves me, but I feel right. like... Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why? why? Um, I want to get baptised. I, I feel like God's got something powerful for me. I feel like I'm, I'm called to do something powerful. Yeah. Definitely. And um, I believe that I, I feel like I can change... I feel like I want to change the world, but, you know, but uh, I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people in my age that don't really come to church, and I think I'm going to target them and just fire the Holy Spirit at them. I know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, um, to be honest, I, God's put me in a, such a good position with the people around me, with this church. Claudia, like, I'm like, Danny, like, Claudia, Richard, Damien, Colin, who's not here. I don't, God, I've been blessed with these people being in my life, you know? And, and yeah, and they're, they're, they're pushing me and pushing me, and they know there's something, and there's something coming. Just, you watch, there's something coming there. Yeah. 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 Joshua. <laughs> oh, Father God, we just thank you for everybody here, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you for what you have done in their lives, and we thank you that this is just the beginning, that the best is yet to come in every one of these, Lord God. So I just, I just pray, Lord Jesus, that you just cover them in the blood of Jesus and their families, Lord God. I pray that as they, as they put that stake in the ground today, that they are saying, this is the day where it's no more going back to the past, Lord God, that, that they are saying, I want to commit my life 100% today. Today is a step of faith saying, no more will the enemy um, you know, rally me to the ground or push me up against the wall, Lord God, but they are saying that, that they are here for you, Lord God. They know you have called them to great things and this is their this is their commitment to you. So we just thank you for each and every one of them. And we just pray the fire of the Holy Spirit in each and every one of them, Lord God. I pray that you speak to them through visions and through dreams, Lord God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you just show them the calling, that you show them their worth, that their identity is grounded in you, Lord God, not the world. And I just pray, Lord Jesus, and we just pray against the enemy. And we say we thank you for what you are doing in Corby, in these people's lives, Lord God. And we are saying we will not back down till we see every street corner, every addict, every person who is struggling come into this church and be set free and walk in their purpose in the life that you have called for them, Lord God. Because you have called us to great things, not to be depressed, not to be down, not to be discouraged, but to be free and to be walk a life of freedom through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And um, I would like to um, invite, you know, the elders and, and really anybody who's really close to any of the people being baptised, if they'd like to come and um, pray with them.